In this section, we'll be looking at the assembly tools in Spaceline. The assembly tools can be used for two main things. One is to assemble things and orient them to the world origin or each other. And the second thing that can be used for is assembling components together to form either a static assembly or a dynamic assembly. To start with, let's hover over the F1. To start, let's hover over the Align tool and press F1. This will bring us into the Help menu for the Align tool, which is also located under Assigning Assembly Conditions. You'll notice in here some videos and some descriptions on how to assemble things together. You'll also notice that there's an Assembly Constraints Reference Chart. By clicking this, you'll get a quick reference chart of what happens when you're assembling one thing to another, such as a plane to an edge, a cylinder to a cone, or a spherical face to another spherical face. Let's close this out and get back into space claim. The next thing we'll want to look at for assembling a static part to the origin and to align it into place is by showing the world origin. To do this, go to the display tab in the top middle of your screen and go all the way to the right to the show group. Here you can turn on the world origin. This is where 000, zero, zero is located. So now let's look at assembling these, this part to the world origin so it's in a nice position. To do this, we're going to be using the Align and Orient tools. Basically, the Align tool lets you select on one thing on the part and align it to something else. For instance, if I want this cylindrical face that's in the center of this part to be oriented on the z-axis, I would click the cylindrical face click the z-axis and it's going to move the part so that it's aligned to that axis. To see different views quickly in the bottom left hand corner of the screen you can click on different views to view the orientation of them. Next let's take a look at aligning the bottom of this face to the origin as well. Again I haven't switched tools I'm still in the align tool. I would click the bottom face and simply then click the x-axis. It's going to move the part to the x-axis. Notice now we haven't assembled the bottom of the face right on the world origin. The last thing we want to do is orient the part. Now if I click the face and I click the y-axis, the entire face is going to move to that. The problem is I want it to stay on the z-axis here. So instead of aligning something, I would orient. This changes the rotation of a part until this face is oriented to this one, basically rotating that around. Now you'll notice if I go to the bottom left-hand corner and click on the Orient Gizmo, we can quickly move this part around and see that it's oriented onto the world origin. One thing I want you to notice is that you'll notice that no assembly conditions are actually being created in the structure tree. In order to create semi-permanent assembly conditions, we're going to need to assemble components together. To take a look at this more, let's look at the other assembly. Let's look at the other file called assembly. Here you'll notice in the structure tree, we have a solid, various components, and a subassembly. Let's, let's right click on assembly and expand all so we can start to see what the solids are inside of each of these components. When we're assembling components together to make a static assembly or a dynamic mechanism, we'll want to start with the bottom up. Think of this as a Mr. Potato model. Start with the feet being static and start to assemble things on top of that to build out the model. So whichever part isn't going to be moved should be the part that's anchored. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the assembly group we have an anchor button. Clicking any face on the part and clicking anchor automatically locks that part down. What that means is it's totally rigid. If I click on bracket you'll notice I can't move that in any direction x, y, or z. If I toggle that off, you notice I can then move and activate that bracket. So notice that you can toggle on and off these assembly conditions as we add them.
The next thing we'll do is start to assemble something to that object, such as a line. Let's start by aligning the face on the cylinder to our cylindrical face here. As I click on that, the first thing assembles to the second thing and snaps into place. You'll also notice that we have an align condition created in both components, in the bracket component and in the bolt component. Let's assemble this again. I'm going to assemble the face here to our face here. It moves and snaps that into place. Now you'll notice these two assembly conditions, they might not be in the right orientation. We may want to flip this around to the other side. In the anchored component, if you right click and try to reverse the sense, you'll notice we're going to break that assembly condition. Because of the anchor, this component can't move and reverse itself. So I'm going to right click and reverse that back to its original position. You, like, you want to reverse the sense on the bolt component. By right clicking and reversing sense, you're flipping that around to the other direction. You'll also notice that once I have that assembled in two conditions, if I click on bolt, I can only move that in one direction. In fact, it automatically picks that blue rotation arrow because it's the only way I can move the part. Again, clicking the bolt, notice automatically selects that blue rotation arrow. You also notice that if you temporarily toggle these off, you can then move that bolt in more directions. And you can move it to any other new position or area. However, if you turn these back on, they'll start to snap back into place. The last thing we want to do to fully assemble this bolt is to align one more face. You notice if I align the front face here to the side face of the bolt, it creates another condition and it says this one can't be satisfied. I can't have the centers aligned and align this face. I could have one or I could have the other, but I can't have both. So again, just like in our first example, we'll want to delete this condition and instead of aligning, orient. What orient does is rotates a face until it's oriented to another one. It's a great way to set the direction of something while not actually moving the part. Also while we're here, when you align something, you can have an offset. Simply by clicking the condition in the tree, such as this align, we'll get a property. Again, properties will show up depending on what's selected. So here, you can change it to be negative 5, change it to be positive 5. This will create a small gap in between those two faces you're aligning something to. Now let's look at aligning a few other things and assembling them into place. Let's say we want to assemble this part, this blue part, onto the green one. You'll notice that based on the position of this, you probably want to assign the center of this green part to the center of this blue one. The best way to do that is to assemble one plane to another plane. You'll notice there's already a plane inside of the bracket component. And because we're assembling one component to another component, we can use faces or axes inside one of the solids in that component, or we can use actual planes or axes we place in there. Let's put in a plane inside of this blue part. The first thing we'll do is activate it. By right-clicking, and choosing Activate Component, we can activate that blue part. You should notice that this is now going to make that part bold in the structure tree and gray out all of the other parts. Now let's put a plane down the center of this by selecting the face on one side, Control selecting the face on the other side, we'll be able to put a plane down the middle. This is one of the fastest ways to put a plane that bisects two faces into the design. And there's one actual unique thing we can do with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and choose to pin that plane. What this means is that now this plane will always remain in between these two faces if I make a change. Notice here if I start to pull, 
on this face, the plane is remaining in between those two faces I've created. Now why might that be important? Let's start by aligning these two planes together. I'm going to right click on our top assembly and activate the entire design. Now let's assemble this into place. I'm going to align the cylindrical face to the cylindrical face and I'm going to align the plane to the plane. Now the center of this blue part will always be centered on the axis on the green one. And if I change the blue part, clicking on this face and pulling, you'll notice it's staying in the middle of the design. So if you were going to make a change or a modification, it's always going to stay centered on that, which makes sense. The next thing we want to do is start to assemble some of the last parts in place. Remember, when you're assembling things together and aligning them, the first thing you click on, such as the bolt, will assemble to the second thing you select on. And we'll snap that right into place. Remember, if you are assembling something small like the back face on this, it makes sense to zoom in, select that face, zoom out, and select the second face to assemble it. And again, as long as you stay inside this tool, you'll continue to assemble things together. So it can be done fairly quickly. So we have only a few more things to assemble on the design. And the last thing I want to assemble is this small part on the left. Click the, click the small arrow and click it a second time. Before I do this, I want to point out that we have a solid, which we're assembling, to the bracket. Notice when I click on the space and click on the small green cylinder, it assembles it into place but gives me a warning. It says some conditions were not created. What this means is that it actually didn't create an assembly condition as it did in all these other examples. The reason for this is that we're assembling components to each other and that's where assembly conditions are made. If a part is not in a component, it's not going to make an assembly condition. If I want to assemble two parts together and two components, the first thing I have to do is move this to a new component. Right click, move to new component, call this small bolt, and now I can create assembly conditions. Aligning the cylindrical face to the cylindrical face, creates that align condition. But next we want to create and make sure that this flat face is right up against the cylinder. We're not going to align something, not going to orient it. We'll make faces tangent. I'm going to make the face here, planar face, tangent to the cylinder one. It's going to slide that in until the face is tangent to the other face. So right now if I rotate it, we can see that it's still a dynamic assembly and I can move it into place. If I wanted to stop its movement, I could do one last assembly where I would orient the blue face to the green one. Remember, all of these conditions we're making, you can type in the exact position. By moving to the RAM component, we can click on Orient and change it from 0 to 45 or 40 to rotate it into position. So I hope you've seen different ways to assemble things together to create both a static assembly and a mechanism. And remember, we're assembling one component to another component at the same level. So make sure all of your solids are in different components before you start to assemble them together. Thank you for watching.